Turning now to another big developing story, tensions building in Ukraine ahead of tomorrow's vote deciding the fate of Crimea. Russian and Ukrainian officials are saying at least three people have been killed and many more wounded in violence between pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian activists in two cities in the east. Now tomorrow, the Black Sea Peninsula of Crimea will be voting on whether to secede from Ukraine and become annexed by Russia. Joining us now, someone who knows firsthand about the Russian threat better than most, Georgia's former president, Mikhail Shalikashvili. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. It's very nice to have you here because I know you have raised so many concerns about what lies ahead uh, for the people of Ukraine. And I know you are consulting uh, with people in Ukraine about the concerns uh, about Russia's involvement. Uh, what are your thoughts at this moment? Many people are predicting that uh, people will be voting in Crimea to secede. I think it's not only about Crimea anymore. I think Russia is <coughs> preparing uh, for some kind of military onslaught on Ukraine, Ukraine uh, overall. And uh, the problem here is that, you know, it's very much deja vu. It looks like a very well pre prepared, premeditated uh, uh, operation uh, that will result into large scale military involvement, uh, engagement of Ukrainian forces, at least at this stage it looks, unless something dramatic happens for the world to stop it. And actually, when you look at these provocations that people coming in from Russia do in eastern Ukraine, uh, this very much reminds me of what was happening in Georgia. We had in Georgia a uh, 2008 invasion of Russia. But after that, we had lots of things connected with uh, organizing provocations, street clashes, violence. And basically, Russia was all the time looking for pretext to come in, even including the terrorist attacks, uh, very well documented uh, terrorist attacks done by Russian special uh, forces and Russian uh, intelligence services uh, in my territory. So it very much reminds me of what's happening in Ukraine or what was happening in Georgia. And it looks like, because today Russian Foreign Minister said that they will respond to demands of uh, Russian speakers in Ukraine for help. It's very much the same scenario how big, uh, bigger countries usually invade its weaker countries in the past, except that Ukraine is a 46 million country. It's the largest country in Europe. And in the eyes of the whole, of whole Europe and the world, the largest country in Europe is being sliced up. It's absolutely unprecedented situation, maybe since the end of Second World War. And certainly there is lots of things at stake here for the world, for the United States, for the whole region. And don't believe those who tell you why should Americans care. It's, it concerns the core of the U.S. national interest. I want to just ask you quickly, uh, you said that in a recent editorial that Mr. Putin's motivations are similar to those of pre-war Germany. He wants to rectify what he sees as the unjust treatment and humiliation by Western powers after the Cold War. Can you tell me... Um, why you feel this way? Well, I mean, it's very similar. It's like a carbon copy of what happened to Sudetenland in uh, Czechoslovakia when Germany was starting its onslaught on Europe. Uh, basically, they claimed that, and they had indeed two million uh, German speakers in Sudetenland, so they went so-called to protect them. But then European power and the Neville Chamberlain, British Prime Minister back then, said, well, Czechoslovakia is a faraway country, and we should not care about the quarrels between the peoples of whom we know very little. And then uh, Poland followed, and then other places all, all over Europe. And as we Winston Churchill said, appeasers, you know, feed one country by another to crocodile, hoping that they will be uh, the last to be eaten by the crocodile. And it looks like a Putin is on a rampage, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very ideological one, because Putin thinks that Cold War for him is not over, that he needs revenge in Cold War. It's about liberty. You know, Ukrainians are not fighting just for their territory. Ukrainians were fighting for well, being part of the Western world. That's why they had just peaceful revolution which, with a very bad crackdown from the government, which used to force against them. Now, if the United States don't stand up the, uh, for freedom now, then the core U.S. interests will be violated because, you know, that's this, the, these are the principles which made the Western world uh, strong. And the Ukrainians are going to the West for that principles, not just for the sake of geopolitical choice. And that's exactly what Vladimir Putin wants to stop. That's exactly what Adolf Hitler wanted to stop in the 1930s. So there are lots of similar parallels, and I'm also not, no, 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 not the only one to draw them. And uh, we, I think we, we need to draw lessons from the examples of the past. I think that the, core, the U.S. has been 
prime benefactor from international law and order that had been established in Europe after Second World War and after the end of Cold War. Okay. A breakdown of that law and order will primarily harm U.S. interests and will damage the cause of freedom and liberty all around the world. Mr. And I President, think that's very, very dangerous. We thank you so much for your insights. I thank know uh, this is a very uh, tough time for you as you watch what's taking place in, uh, in Crimea, but we will check back with you and uh, keep us posted on the developments as you see we should, them. It's a very dangerous situation the today, tomorrow, the days to come, and it needs to be closely watched because it's not only about Ukraine, it's about the world order and about freedom and democracy in the world. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.